Hi everyone, so I'm back in my shed again because last week I found out that Triton Tools were doing a competition called Masters of Wood where someone can design and build something within a day and I thought I needed a workbench anyway so I'm going to show you how to do it and kill two birds with one stone and it's got two shelves, it's really sturdy and I'm loving it in my shed right now. So keep on watching if you want to learn how to make it. So to make sure I had a really sturdy workbench, I bought seven 2.4 meter lengths from Wix and these are C16 or CLS 38 by 63 mils. And this cost me about £16.79, I went for the cheaper ones. And notice this is why I needed a workbench, because my conservatory shouldn't really look like this. And I actually had a really old piece of this and I first started with a length of my workbench and I wanted to mark this down to 150 centimeter lengths and because I was creating a top and a shelf, I cut out four of these. And I don't really feel safe with our circular saw, there's not a great place to do it, so I'm just using my trusty hand saw. I'll leave all the links below and a blog post on how I did it, just in case you want to follow it to the letter. Then I thought I'd just lay them on the kitchen table so I could rest the chipboard on top that I was going to use. If you watched my shelf tutorial last week, then you'll know I bought this recently and I've still got a fair bit to use up, so I thought it'd just be cheaper doing this. And it's sturdy enough for the job, so everyone's a winner. You don't have to rest it on the wood like this. I just wanted to get a feel for it, to be honest. And then once I marked the length, I cut four pieces down to size because I wanted two on the top and two on the bottom. And again, just use my regular hand saw. Oh, and this chipboard is actually OSB 3 and it's 9mm thick. And each piece is actually 295 centimetres wide. And then it was time to start thinking about structural noggins. And that's just to make it really robust and take a lot of weight. So I laid two pieces of chipboard down and placed two 150 centimetre lengths either side. And to create a noggin that sat in between either end, I just held it alongside and just pencil marked it where I needed to cut. So we're back to cutting again. There's a lot of sawing with this project, but it really can be done in just a few hours. And I made sure the noggins weren't too far apart from each other, which was about 37 and a half centimeters. And I cut five noggins per shelf, so I had to do this 10 times. And once I'd cut every piece for the shelves, it was now time to lay them all out and start screwing them in. And I made sure all the woods at the sides were nice and flush and start positioning all of my noggins before I screw them. I think that looks pretty tidy. And then I used screws that were long enough to go through both pieces and then tried using my Black & Decker screwdriver, which I soon realized it was much easier to use a five and a half drill bit to create some pilot holes and then screw them in. And I made sure I went all the way around and checked with my tri-square to make sure I had perfect right angles and at last a worktop. And then I used two of the cut chipboard pieces and laid them on top, which covered everything perfectly and screwed those into place. And I used screws for these about half the size. Like I said, I'll leave everything below. And then I needed to flip it over. And because I didn't want to damage my dining table, I put a blanket over the top, just in case any screw heads were poking out. And then I could slot my noggins into place just with a bit of encouragement from a rubber mallet. And now it's a good idea to mark on the outsides of where the noggin is, because when you need to flip it over to screw it in, you know exactly where to screw into. So again, I'm drilling in to create pilot holes and fix into place using the very first screws that I showed you earlier. And then I needed to make the legs and I'm five foot four and I worked out I wanted it roughly on my pelvis line. So that was bang on 100 centimeters. I did find it a little bit high later on and I decided to keep it this height because often I slouch over and I get a bad back. So this was quite refreshing. And I measured and drew a line with my brand new favorite tool from Tool Station, which is a tri-square, only £3.50. I absolutely love this thing. I'm sure a lot of you know about it already, but it's got a lip on it, so it helps you draw a straight line. And then it was sawing time again, and obviously I cut four legs for it. So because I actually started this project very late the day before, I decided to continue it on a new day, and also I'd nipped to Tool Station to get some carriage bolts, which were M6, 100 millimeters long, just so I could make sure it was strong as an ox. So like an idiot, I forgot to press record on my very first drilling of this. So when it came to drilling the second hole, I didn't want it to move at all. So I put one carriage bolt in there to keep it secure and just malleted it in. That way there were less movement for my second carriage bolt. So because my drill bit wasn't long enough to go through the two pieces, luckily it made an indent on the second piece and know exactly where the drill wanted to go and drill straight through that. I could have got out my bigger drill, but I just couldn't be bothered. And then I just malleted the second one in and screwed in nuts on the other side. And I repeated that method for each leg. And then I moved it to the other side of the conservatory so I could focus on the second shelf. 
Now the chipboard on this shelf, I only put screws in all four corners because I wanted to dismantle it later so I could jigsaw some holes around the legs. So I used an off-cut piece and drew around them with a pencil in each corner where I'd positioned exactly where I wanted my legs to be. And I marked on the inside as well. So then I unscrewed the chipboard and drilled four large holes in each corner of that rectangular pencil marking and slowly cut it out with the jigsaw. And to test them, I just slotted the off cuts through and it worked a charm. And to make sure I never had any problems while I wanted to screw the chipboard back on, I used an off cut in each four pieces just to prevent any movement or trouble later while I screwed the chipboard on top. And screwed into the noggins exactly like the top surface. And then I had a helping hand to place on top of the shelf and place the legs through. And at this point I moved it into the back garden and slowly and gently malleted the shelf to make sure it was roughly level. And using another off-cut piece, I held it against the existing leg, malleted the shelf down until it was in line. And I think this is the only part where it's quite tricky to do on your own. And once I'd got it a level, I created a pilot hole just to put a really long screw in to keep it steady just before I moved on to the carriage bolts which I'll show you shortly. But this is Hans just testing it out. He seems to love it as a dog shelf, particularly the lower shelf. We just placed him on here to pose. And this is a long drill bit I was telling you about, and I knew I couldn't use a short drill for this, so I drilled straight through the two pieces and went all the way around and malleted in two carriage bolts per lower leg. And then the final bit to be done was to tighten the nuts with a spanner and that was it. I do regret not using washers as well because sometimes the nuts partially went into the wood but I really didn't think it was that big an issue. But that's the only thing I'd do differently. And I couldn't resist climbing on it because I'm freaking proud. This is my first ever workbench and it must have cost me about 20 quid at the most because I had everything else in anyway. And see what I mean about the dog shelf? And something I thought was totally sweet was I had to check with the spirit level and that was music to my ears. And then once it was in place, we couldn't resist placing all the off cuts we've got, all the long pieces on the bottom shelf. And I'm very, very happy with it. So if I don't win it, it's not the end of the world because I needed one anyway. And feel free to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more where I'm going to be showing you how to convert a camper van and just general DIY things in the home. So hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.